I had never really spoken about this before, but I feel it's important to include it so people can understand that at least to a degree I can relate to the families and friends that have lost loved ones because of Cecilia and the rest of her group. It's somewhat, actually not somewhat, it is hard and to talk about and harder than I actually realized. Um, but I had a friend who, as far as evidence and all roads that lead, looks like he was murdered by Cecilia, or at least his murder was orchestrated by Cecilia. His name wasn't mentioned in the trial, but then again, two years into investigation, the count for murders was already over 40 people. And the investigators didn't want to include every person that was murdered in the trial because the list seemingly never ended and therefore the trial would go on extensively and potentially to a never-ending point. So the investigators only wanted to cover a bunch of the murders and from what looked like the, the murders that were at least publicized as well to then basically get this group sentenced and locked away for life as soon as possible. I can understand their reasoning even though I also feel that so many people their names were not mentioned and basically it feels like they died in vain uh, whether that makes sense or not but it just yeah they were they were not spoken up for but it is what it is that's the way it happened and that's what the decision was and um, during early stages of investigation my friend's name was on the list I had only met him soon after I had left Cecilia in fact, he had actually met Cecilia and he knew several other members uh, of Cecilia's group uh, or rather Ria's ministry team at that point in time. And the members that he knew at that point in time were the members that were trying to warn Ria. I don't recall what his first initial um, reaction or his first initial thoughts on Cecilia were when he first initially met her because when I had met him he had only spoken about the lies and the deception that Cecilia was portraying to the world and as far as I understand he actually saw through this very quickly after having met Cecilia and he was very soon deemed as a threat to her because he wanted to expose her. He wanted to tell as many people as possible that knew her to warn them um, so that they wouldn't be harmed and fooled and everything else that went along with it. And Cecilia knew about this. Um, I'm not going to mention his name, but... He wasn't exactly a close friend, but I still called him friend, which is rare on my part to do with people. He, he, um, I don't want to mention too many details, but the scenario and situation 
and everything that was revolving around his death to a 100% degree immediately screamed Cecilia. It was undeniable. Uh, there was no possible way you could sway away from it. And um, he, he wanted to speak up to warn people, to protect people. And he lost his life for that. From what I heard about the way he died, it was excruciating. It was probably the worst kind of death I had heard up until that point, and that was even before Reginald Ben Dixon's murder and all, all the other murders that were even publicized. So, but I would definitely say that his murder was an overkill. When I first heard about his death, it was surreal. Most times when I think about him, it still feels surreal. Um, Still having him or his name on my social media or even on my phone is strange. And many times I want to delete it because he is no longer here. Um, I just can't bring myself to do it. The final and full acknowledgement of what had happened to him and the fact that he is no longer here. I just cannot seem to embrace. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to ever embrace it. Uh, maybe once uh, I've once the full reality has hit me, and I've worked through the grieving process properly, then I'll be able to do that. But for now, in my mind. Subconsciously, it just feels like I haven't spoken to him in a long time and I haven't seen him in a long time because he's just busy. Uh, easy way to, I suppose, easy way to deal with losing him. And that's the way I've thought about it since his death, which has been almost a decade now. I actually can't recall the year that he was murdered, but... It's possibly about a decade. And still, uh, still to this day, now and then he crosses my mind. I don't know if it's because of Cecilia and everything involving her and revolving around her seems to have bombarded my life, not just since the beginning, but more so since the trial started. And um, so, of course, it brings up a lot of things constantly, uh, including things I hadn't th thought about before and uh, memories forgotten. But nonetheless, it's, it's bombarded my life and obviously have not dealt with what feels like the bulk of things that have happened. But I want to mention my friend, even though I will not mention his name, so that even though I knew Cecilia, was her best friend, was involved through all the weird and bizarre and ridiculous and even the odd fun scenarios and even though I was uh, fully involved in the investigation since it started up until the final sentencing losing someone that was actually important to me was not something I escaped from either Cecilia affected my life in every single angle and 
I do understand the loss that people feel with regards to their loved ones that were murdered, whether it was for money or for re revenge. I do understand the pain. I do understand the loss. I do understand the need to seek justice, even though mm, there is nothing that could actually be served towards this group for what they did that would be deemed right or equate to the type of loss that we experience in losing someone. Um, but I, I did not escape this aspect of the of everything altogether as well